So I'm not here to give you any particular legal insight. The IPSC is guided by international law, but we're not a legalistic organisation. Nor am I here today to speak about the intricacies of state investment policies. We're not uh, policy obsessive, said the IPSC. What I'm here to do today is to represent the view of the street, of tens of thousands of people who march every week to take actions, big and small, that display their love and solidarity with the Palestinian people in countless creative ways. I'm here to represent the 80% of people in Ireland who understand that they are seeing a live-streamed genocide unfold. 70% of people in Ireland understand Israel is an apartheid regime. And 70% of people in Ireland want to see sanctions imposed on Israel. That is who I represent today. There is a mass movement for Palestine in Ireland right now. The last two demonstrations that the IPSC organised have each brought 100,000 people onto the streets of Dublin. Now, if people marching, 100,000 people marching in the capital of this country does not make the current government sit up and pay attention, then I'm pretty sure that every single TD who's up for re-election understands very well that there isn't a town in Ireland where there haven't been demonstrations and actions and marches for Palestine over the last five months. And the target of people's anger is not just the genocidal apartheid regime in Israel. People's anger has been directed at the Irish government for what we see as the lack of any real tangible action to end the genocide. And it's not hard to see why. Over the last number of years, various constituent parts of the Oireachtas have supported bills, motions, reports, calling for a much stronger line from the government. There was majority support in both houses of the Oireachtas for the now frozen Occupied Territories Bill. In May 2021, a motion recognising Israel's de facto annexation of parts of the Occupied West Bank passed the Doyle unanimously. The motion called on the state not to render aid or assistance in maintaining the situation. In July 2021, a Joint Committee on Foreign Affairs and Defence report called for concrete diplomatic and economic measures to be applied where Israel violates international law and again called on the state not to render aid or assistance to Israel which would facilitate the maintenance of annexation. Last month, the Shannon unanimously passed a comprehensive motion calling on the government to impose sanctions on Israel, to enact the Occupied Territories Bill and the Illegal Israeli Settlements Divestment Bill, and to actively ensure that no weapons are being sent to Israel through Irish airspace. Minister Simon Coveney has compared Israel to a rogue state, and Antishik Leo Varadkar himself said, we can no longer treat Israel as though it were a normal liberal Western democracy. And yet, to date, nothing has been done. No action has been taken, no sanctions, nothing. And it's a result of inaction like this by governments across the world that the Israeli state is emboldened to continue its heinous crimes now culminating in genocide. Now, today, this committee has called witnesses on the illegal Israeli settlements divestment bill. Obviously, we support the bill. Uh, there's no way that Irish taxpayers' money should be invested in any entity that aids the construction and maintenance of illegal Israeli settlements in occupied Palestine. Ending this blatant compl complicity is a no-brainer. Indeed, it's the very least that common sense and human decency, not to mention international law, demands. So we've heard that there are perhaps trade and other laws that will prevent the type of action that people in Ireland wish to see with regard to Israel. And we say to that, we say if the law becomes an obstacle to justice, it is time to challenge that law. Because in the end, it's actions, not words, that will help the Palestinian people achieve their freedom. Ireland has just exited the so-called decade of centenaries, which marks Ireland's partially successful defeat of British imperialism here in Ireland. And that was a process that resonated around the globe 
and precipitated the ultimate defeat of most of the British Empire. A hundred years later, we propose that it is time for Ireland to take the first steps in defeating a new hegemon, and that is the hegemon of silence, of inaction, of complicity with regard to Israel's crimes against the Palestinian people. We can be a beacon for the world and we can be a ray of hope for the Palestinian people. If not now, in the time of a genocide, then when? Over a decade ago, in the wake of Israel's caste-led military onslaught, we in the IPSC submitted a parliamentary question asking, what crime does Israel have to commit in order for Ireland to impose sanctions? The question was ruled out of order for allegedly being rhetorical. So I am taking this opportunity to ask the following question in an entirely non-rhetorical manner. We have seen Israel committing illegal occupation, annexation, mass incarceration, extrajudicial executions, collective punishment, apartheid, genocide, and now the weaponization of starvation. Is there, in fact, any crime for which our government will punish Israel?